Hey everyone, how's it going? And in this video, I'm going to be checking out a few products by a new company called Sam's Detailing, based directly here in the UK. Sam's contacted me a few days ago and asked me would I be um, interested in checking out some of their products, and I said absolutely, I'd love to check them out. So in this video, I'm going to be going over some of their products, and just as a disclaimer, this video is not a paid promotion, the thoughts and opinions expressed are my own, and prices are correct at the time of upload and may be subject to change. So we have another Astra again in this video out of pure coincidence and this one is nowhere near as bad as the last car I did but it still is quite dirty and it could do quite a good clean. It's going to be a perfect test for the products Sam sent down because there's a lot of road film, just dirt and grime all over the car, the wheels are dirty so we should be able to give these products quite a good test out and hopefully by the time we're finished this Astra is going to look nice and new and shiny. We're going to start off by tackling those dirty wheels. Now Sam's, they've sent me three different products to try. An iron reactor, a wheel soap and a flexible alloy wheel brush. So I'm going to start off by just blasting the wheels off with a press washer to move any loose dirt and contaminants that may be sitting on the surface. Sam's wheel soap comes in at £8.25 for 500ml. It's a dedicated wheel soap for your wheel bucket, it's pH neutral and it's safe to use on all wheel finishes. I used two capfuls in my wheel bucket and agitated with a pressure washer and as you can see the foam was nice and thick and lubricated. I also used the flexible alloy wheel brush which is £16 which features a flexible stem wire to get hard to reach places and has protective rubber guards so you don't scratch your finish. The wheel soap was thick and lathery but still being pH neutral I just didn't feel it was much stronger than regular shampoo. I probably would have preferred to try the dedicated wheel cleaner instead since it could cling to the surface of the wheel. As for the wheel brush, as you can see, it does spit out quite a bit, which is not great if you use something like a fallout remover, because you don't want to get that stuff in your eyes, but it is really good again behind the wheel. I just couldn't shake the feeling though that the wheel will use for a few pounds more would be a better option, because there's different sizes and the smoother, and you can just probably get better finish, because you can't use this on the face of the wheel, the bristles are just too far apart. So I have to resort to using a dedicated detailing brush to finish them off. With all the loose contaminants pretty much removed, I was onto the Iron Reactor, which is a product I really wanted to try. Of course, it does all the regular stuff like targets iron particles and changes colour, but I really like the idea that it's got a gel additive to increase the clean time, so it's much thicker than, let's say, Auto Glimpse Magma, which I tried a few weeks ago, which has kind of ran off the vertical surfaces of the car. So we're giving a good shake up just to mix all those chemicals and apply it to the wheel. You can see it's really, really thick when it comes out, which is great because it's going to dwell there for a few minutes. It's not going to run all to the ground and it can get a really good reaction. I let this product dwell for about seven minutes and you can see in this 40 times sped up clip, there's a great reaction with the product. And I also sprayed on my wheel brush and did behind the wheels just to remove as much as I can. And I did a really, really good job. It's just the brush I felt still didn't clean as well as the woolies probably could have. So I had to resort again to put on my detailing brush and just all the nooks and crannies. But after that, it came really, really well. And I really like this product. There's loads of it left on the surface of the car and the wheels just came up really clean when finished. With the wheels done, it was now onto the body and I removed any loose contaminants with the pressure washer before I hit it with any snow foam. So the snow foam comes in £11.50 for 1000ml, it's a concentrated formula and it's safe on all finishes. And if I recall correctly, it was the first product Sam's brought to the market, so I was actually quite interested to see what this one was like. Applying the snow foam to the car, it wasn't the thickest snow foam I'd ever used, I think Auto Finesse's Avalanche went on a bit thicker. But this thing did really stick on the sides, and especially on the bonnet and the roof, all those horizontal surfaces.
This shot is sped up 20 times. As you can see, the horizontal surfaces again are very, very good. The sides are pretty good too, especially on the lower areas of the car. It feels like it definitely is working into any of the lower parts of this traffic film and debris down there. And in this shot, I know it's a big no-no to rub your fingers across a dirty car, but I did want to show you how thick the snow foam was. And it was really thick at this point. I still feel like it's doing a good job of bringing down all the dirt and all the contaminants ready for the wash. After giving the car a good wash down with a pressure washer, I inspected the car and was very, very impressed of how clean the car had come up. Of course, there was still dirt on there, but it was visibly less and the car was actually quite presentable from a couple of feet back without even touching it. Next up was the contact wash and their shampoo comes in at £9 for 500 milliliters. It's pH neutral and contains no wax or gloss additives. So unlike, for example, Meguiar's wash and wax, it won't top up any wax elements already on the car. But this is great if you want to add, to add your own wax later on after you've finished detailing in the wash stages. The shampoo foamed up really, really well. There was lots of foam and there was lots of suds, as you can see on my wash mitt. And when applying it to the car's paintwork, it felt like there was a good layer of protection between the car's clear coat and the wash mitt I was using. It felt like in between the two there was lots of lubrication and I wasn't scared of causing any swirl marks into the paint. It was doing exactly what a good shampoo should do. After rinsing the car off, it was onto the drying stage and I wanted to try the exterior detailer as a drying aid. It comes in at £9 to 500ml and I was very excited to see how this product coped. Take note of the water pooling on the wet panel at the moment. All you need to do is apply a few sprays and as you see now when I hit it again with the pressure washer, how little standing water there was left on there. Immediately you can see the hydrophobic properties of the exterior detailer just making all that water run off and it's far less we have to drag off now of our towel, really reducing the risk of scratching the car's paintwork. Using my Aqua Deluxe drying towel by Auto Finesse, you can see that pretty much all the water gets pulled off the car on the first pass. Less passes, less chance of scratching the paintwork. With the car's paintwork dry, it was time to use the iron reactor as a stage 1 decontamination to remove any iron particles embedded in the car's paintwork. Now I know some people on here will say, why did they bother drying the car before using this? Quite simply because of the gel additives in here, I wanted the clean to be as good as possible and I want the concentration to be as high as possible, so I just really didn't want to dilute the product. So what we can see on here is the spray pattern is fantastic when you spray triggers, it really is one of the strong points. It means to get a very nice even coverage and I like this because it means I probably don't have to agitate it to get a good reaction across the entire panel of the car. That's a problem I had with the Auto Finesse one, was the spray triggers are that bad and when you're trying to do a, a, you know, a surface as big as what the car is, you really want the spray trigger to be um, distributed evenly, very easily and those um, gel additives again on the side were fantastic and making the product cling to the car for the entire dwell time. After letting the product dwell for about 7-10 to 10 minutes, we came back to the car and we noticed there was a very, very even, consistent spread of reaction across the paintwork, which was really, really good to see. It gave me great confidence that this product had targeted evenly everything that was on the car. You see even on the sides, there's plenty of product still uh, clinging to the paintwork, reacting with it, and it hasn't even just ran off. So it's a very, very good product and I'm very, very impressed by this. Of course, at this stage, I know some people are going to ask why didn't I go to a stage 2 decontamination with the tar and stage 3 of a clay bar. Quite simply, those products weren't provided to me during this detail and I was literally only just detailing the products that were supplied. So, okay, I understand that you probably would be best going for a clay bar on this, but this is where these products end and onto the final stage of the car, waxing it.
Next up is a product I can't really test you on this detail, mainly because yours has sent me a liquid wax and a wax applicator pad, and I really wanted to try two products together rather than just trying one. So unfortunately, I can't really show this on the car properly. What this is, is a spray-on rinse-off formula that provides two to three months protection. It's got silicon dioxide technology. Very similar thing to what's in a ceramic coating, just not concentrated. It will also enhance gloss levels. It's really easy to apply. So I'm going to show you this now on my Astro instead, which has no wax. And maybe in the future, I'll try to give more of a dedicated review. Although I'm not promising anything. This Astra is not the same one that featured in a 270,000 mile video, no, this is another one again, this is my one. And as you can see, there's no protection on the paint of this. With the pressure washer, the water pools mostly. Now I'm going to take the ceramic coating, or should I say ceramic boost at least, and give a light spring on the wet panel. So I take the ceramic boost, I apply it just evenly to the car's panel, and I'll leave it to dwell on there for just about 30 seconds. I don't have to touch it, I don't have to agitate it. Now I just hit it with the pressure washer and you can see now there's instant beading, the car is hydrophobic. You just do this straight after your wash stage before you dry the car. Really quick, really easy and you see now the water just doesn't want to stay on the car's paintwork at all. Finally we want to their liquid wax which is 18 pounds of 500 milliliters. It provides 2-3 to three months protection and contains a certain concentration of Brazilian Canuba. Of course, being a wax, it's meant to provide protection and also enhance gloss levels. We also have the wax applicator pads which is £5, it's a great size and fits a hand really nice, it's high quality. So taking this, one thing I want to note which I've not said so far is really like the packaging that Sam's Detailing has. It comes second only in my eyes to also Finesse providing. The products just look really smart and they have a really nice feel. I applied a layer of wax to the wax applicator pad and then proceeded to buff it into the car's paintwork. Now here's where the first problems with this product were. It's actually quite hard to see and that's actually shown up a little bit better on camera. Whereabouts you've buffed on the car. So when you come to do the panels later on, it's hard to see which parts have been done and which parts haven't. I really wish this product would haze a little bit more, so it's got a clear distinction between fresh panels and wax panels. The products have been fairly easy to apply, and um, definitely a bit easier than a paste wax, not as good as a spray wax in terms of application. Um, it was a little bit hard to buff off, again a little bit easier than a paste wax and harder than a spray wax, what do you expect, it's a liquid wax. But here's where the problems with the products really lay. On this panel here, like I just said, I've done half of it with wax, half of it without, and I really could not see any visual difference between the wax side and the unwax side. There seems to be virtually no visual enhancements with it, which is a real shame because the likes of Meguiar's quick spray wax really provides quick visual enhancements and is really, really quick to apply. And that's the car done. I'm going to show you the after shots just in a second. But here's a rundown of the products. Would I recommend them and just some general costs. So the shampoo, really, really like this product. It was a good shampoo. It was very pure. I used 17 millimeters. I put millimeters on there. I meant milliliters. Typo there. So 17 milliliters I used, which is two capfuls. I meant 31 pence per application. Would I recommend this product? Yes. Next up, the iron reactor. I love this product. I think it's my favorite one of them all. It did have a strong smell, but was really thick, had great clean times, the reaction was good, and the trigger mechanism was great. I used roughly half the product, 260 milliliters, which works out at £5.19 per application. That was the bodywork and the wheels. Now, silly me at this stage, I forgot to make a slide dedicated to the wheel soap. The thing is, I don't really feel like this product was necessary in the detail. I think my results would have been just as good using either normal shampoo or just using the iron reactor and a normal dedicated wheel cleaner. That being said, here's the cost per application is 30 pence. I used roughly 18 milliliters of it. So it is quite cheap, or as I could say, two capfuls. It's about the same as a regular shampoo. Next up, the snow foam. I really like this product, it had great clean times. It was not so thick upon the initial application, but degraded slowly when it's on there. I use 75 milliliters, makes it 86 pence per application. Would I recommend this product? Yes. The liquid wax, quite frankly, was a disappointment out of the bunch. It's hard to see where it's applied. It dried too quickly when it was on the paint, making it hard to get off when it got around to the other side of the car. And there was not much visual enhancements, if any. I used 33mm, so it makes it £1.19 per application. Would I recommend this product? 
unfortunately not. The exterior detailer was a great product, it had good lubricity, it was hydrophobic and the trigger mechanism was great. I used 94ml of this, now includes using as a drying aid and also aids in to buff the car off after it waxed it. So little did go quite a long way, I'd get about 5 uses out of this. Would I recommend this? Yes. Same with the wax applicator pad for £5, I don't think you can go wrong, it may wax in a lot easier. And the flexible alloy wheel brush? I'd probably spend the extra few pounds to go for the wheel woolies, although it did make the wheels clean. So all in all, Sam's detailing, I think has been a pretty good first, you know, go really. Um, I really like what they put, brought to the table. Some of the products have had unique selling points. Loved a few of them, a couple of them not so great, but really promising start. I do think I'll be buying some of their products in the future. Anyway guys, that's everything. So thanks for watching, and if you like this, don't forget to subscribe to my Instagram channel as well at at talksteer uk so see you soon thanks for watching take care